guys, it's recently admitted New York Attorney Kai here, serving up my hints, tips, tricks and everything I generally think you need to know if you're thinking about studying for and writing the New York Bar Exam. So if that's you, welcome and I hope this is useful and if it's not you and you just want to know what lawyers do or you want to know what I've been doing, hopefully you'll gain something there. Um, but yeah, anyway, today I'm jumping straight in and I'm talking to you about the New York State Exam Specifics, which is the New York Law Course and New York Law, exa law Exam. Um, in addition to those, you also need to do the MPRE and the UBE in New York State, but I'll get onto those in subsequent videos. But today I'm specifically talking to you about the New York Law Course and New York Law Exam. Anyway, I hope you've got your drink. I've certainly got mine. Let's chat. Great, let's talk about the New York Law Course. Let's jump in. So in my last video, I told you a little bit about setting your bowl or bowler account up. Anyway, super easy. Jump on. It's one of the top drop downs in the, in the bar at the side. Create your account. Super simple. And literally it was like this for me. Um, so hopefully it's still the same. Anyway, just for context, I wrote all these exams in 2019, but certainly from talking to people, I've heard that the process is largely the same. The only thing that's really changed is the videos. But anyway, if this is you, you're going to do your research anyway. I know you will. But yeah, this is what I went through. So please check. Um, but yeah, literally jump onto your bowl account, bowl account. Um, and there at the top is going to say New York Law Course. There was no cost associated with this. I literally jumped on and this is what it was. So it's 17 hours of online videos that cover 12 substantive areas of law. And you literally watch the law video segment and answer the multiple choice question at the end. Now, sounds simple. Is that simple? <laughs> the only thing is you can't fast forward, you can't rewind. And if you get the question wrong, watch the video again. Um, so yeah, that's it. And also, it's not just watch it again. It will make you watch it again to progress. <laughs> so anyway, now you know. Um, cats out the bag. So what I did to make it super or as enjoyable as, as it's going to be um, was grab some of your favourite snacks. Like, grab a drink. Like, make it comfortable. But this is law movie night. It's great. Like, <laughs> um, and take some handy notes, like, as you go through. But um, especially if you're going to get a question wrong and you've got to rewatch it, I would suggest you note down that. Um, anything that you just are like, oh, I didn't know that. Or, you know, that's interesting. And maybe it's to do with your practice area. I'd suggest just you note that down too because also this is a really useful resource um, for prepping for the New York law exam but I'll get onto that in a second. Um, so yeah that's what you do you work your way through once you like literally you progress through each of the um, the little segments and it will let you once you answer the question correctly um, and yeah once you finish that time it, you'll get a little timestamp on your bowl account and it will say completed and then the day and the time and that's you done on the New York law course congratulations now you're eligible to write the New York law exam. Um, so one thing I would say actually before I get onto that is be aware of timing. So I think there are like limits on if you've completed just the New York Law course like, and you don't write the New York Law exam, it may expire. So just be aware of that. And obviously if, if you think this is you and you're a little bit confused and you can't find it on the website, just call up the Board of Law Examiners. They're really helpful and they'll be able to give you tailored advice to your situation. Um, so anyway, that's that out of the way, the New York Law exam. <laughs> okay, so this is a two hour, 50 multiple choice question, pass fail exam. I think the pass mark is around 35 questions um, so literally you will log on it's a remote exam so just as the New York law course is remote so is the New York law exam except the New York law exam is only administered four times per year so that's December March June and September now if you want to enroll for a specific exam you have to remote enroll, enroll <laughs> around a month earlier <laughs> so all of the dates for that and all the ex other exams I'm pretty sure is on a little tab again down the same drop down on the side of the bowl uh, that's Board of Law Examiners, New York Board of Law Examiners website, and it says exam date. So if that's you, head over there. Um, but yeah, so it's administered four times a year and you literally just log on and then you do the 50 questions and you've got two hours and you just, yeah, that's it. Um, so a lot of people want to know how you prepare for this exam. I would honestly say it's, it's as straightforward as it gets. So you've done the New York Law course, you've made some some notes i would hope um and then in terms of exam prep the board of law examiners have made this super easy for you they have literally given you all the materials that you need to do well here so literally if you like go on the new york law course tab at the bottom they've got a pdf document there where you can literally um take that on a pen drive to the printers print it out put it in a binder that's at least what i did and you've got all of the information there plus your notes that you need to pass this exam um now what i did was i literally as i said printed it out put my notes in and I tabbed and highlighted. So literally I highlighted like the top of the page with the title, tabbed the sections, and then I just familiarized myself with it generally. I read through it like I read a book, like not intensely like trying to study it and cram it in my head. Certainly areas where there was a bit of law that I wasn't too sure on or whatever, I did do it like a little bit of like understanding, making sure that I was like snappy on it. Um, but yeah, in terms, it, you, it's open book, like, did I say that? Anyway, I hope I said that. It's an open book exam. Like, so I hope you've been through an open book exam in your legal career so far, but if you haven't, 
the way you prepare for it is just the same as you would for a closed book exam except you know like before the exam you're kind of reading through your notes like outside the exam hall you've got those notes you can bring in with you so you don't need to memorize it like you would a like a closed book exam but obviously it makes it faster for you and also you want to have all this information like at your fingertips because you're not going to have time to literally sit down and flick through for every single answer just set yourself up for success it's really simple like just just ha well i say it's really simple it's not that simple but just set yourself up for success and i think i took literally two weeks before the exam to really read through and familiarize myself a couple of sections yeah i read twice three times um but yeah just just get it snappy and at your fingertips um, or know where to find it if you have to because they're not going to ask you it in like in chapter three <laughs> we ask like of course not they know you're intelligent you've gone through law school they're going to ask it you in a different way and i think that's where a lot of people maybe do have disconcerting moments with this exam is like they've just glossed through and when i tell you glossed through like scan read a couple bits and then they find that actually for the first time really in the exam they're really having to grapple with this material so don't let that be you like just just read it through you're like you're intelligent you've got through law school like come on come on don't finesse yourself <laughs> um anyway so that's how i prepare i do know that like some people do use digital versions some people do like i've heard the rumors i know like people there are control f versions out there whatever don't do it don't let that be you <laughs> it's a disparable offense like and honestly why would you put yourself through all this expense like granted it's not the most expensive exam why would you put your career in jeopardy this is what you want to do like so be ethical about it like straight up straight straight forward and also i just think like having a printed out version it minimizes the chance for tech disasters or like accidentally closing the exam window which is something that would happen to me like if if, if i did do that <laughs> like i would end up like just anyway so it was just handy for me to have these hard copy printed materials but yeah just just be aware there is an ethical violation there if you yeah i'm not gonna say no more say no more okay cool so that's that okay now i'm gonna tell you a little bit about practically what to expect so Honestly, I think the best tip here is like, it's a remote exam. The exam like software providers are going to give you a sample exam. So I highly, strongly, really suggest that you do it. It takes five, 10 minutes. You familiarize yourself with the format of the exam. Like in terms of they'll show you like, this is what they'll look like. This is how like the multiple choice things will work. This is how you click it, whatever. Like, why would you not do it? Like, come on, don't finesse yourself. <laughs> like, so just work your way through it. Um, and yeah, do that. So practically, you know what to expect. Also on exam day, um, they will release the password on a website and then they also email it to you. Have the website open and ready. Because <laughs> I think there's like a 15 minute window for you to log in. And if you miss that window, you're out and like you've just failed the exam and you've wasted all your money and your time. So yeah, just set yourself up for success. I think also if you're like a last minute person, the bare minimum time you want to set up your desk space is like two hours before. <laughs> just make sure you have everything set up. Like have your comfy chair. This is a two hour exam. Like come on, be comfortable. Like have your desk set up. Have your, you know, your binder ready. Make sure you've got enough space for your binder. Just logistically think about these things. Also make sure you've got a quiet space. Like I don't know if your house is busy or whether you're going to write this. Just make sure that you're not going to be disturbed for the duration of this. Because again, you can't stop. And I think there are also requirements on you not being interacted with with other people. Make sure that it's just a safe space for you to write. It's an exam. Just make sure it's a safe space to write an exam. Now, practically, I wrote my bar exam um, in a hotel. <laughs> I did put the do not disturb like sign on my door but also I didn't think about the fact the housekeeping are also at liberty to like vacuum the corridors which of course is what they started doing like as I went into the exam so I think with hindsight maybe let reception know if this is you like um you know I'm writing an exam if you could hold housekeeping back from vacuuming for this period of time or whatever like just so at least they've got heads up it's not to say that they're not going to do it but certainly it's a distractor and for me it was a second of like oh vacuuming <laughs> but anyway um that's that um also yeah obviously i've already said like have the window open um and just like make sure that your your like laptop is compatible with everything um there's great tech support out there um who can support you with that pre-exam i think often like when the exam is actually happening the day of they remove tech support ability so that there are live chats like and stuff that you can do before exam day but on exam day they won't have that available just because it wouldn't be fair for people if everyone had tech issues that one person got i don't know that was broadly my vibe anyway it could be completely different now um, and this was pre-covid as well so just just like bear that in mind 
Um, but yeah, so those are kind of the logistical things that I would suggest you consider like when you're coming up against the New York Law course and New York Law exam. Hopefully you found this super in, like interesting and insightful and it will kind of be a, like a little little bit like of insight so you can see what's coming. Um, but yeah, definitely just set yourself up for success. Don't finesse yourself. Just because this is open book doesn't mean you should slack off and not do your best. Um, so yeah, that's the only thing that I would say. And I know you will. Like I know you'll smash this. So yeah. Anyway, so that was today's video. The next video that we do, I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about the MPRE, so that's professional ethics, and then after that, the UBE, I already said at the beginning. Um, but also, as ever, if there's anything you want me to cover off and you just wanna know a little bit more about, just let me know and I will do a little video on it. Um, but yeah, so that was today's Coffee Size Chat. I'm now wrapping up and I shall see you next time.